All right, today's lesson is on describing real world graphs. So it says the graph shows the height of a roller coaster during a single ride. Describe the roller coaster ride. So some things to point out to start is this is my height. Oops. This is my height on the roller coaster and this is the time spent on the roller coaster. So we can see that the roller coaster leaves the gate and climbs up before making this large decline, right? And then it goes up again and then we go back down. Then it looks like we remain constant. There's a smaller hill and we go down one more time before the end of the ride. So we need to write that out in words. All right, so let's do that again. So we could say the roller coaster. That is not a thin pin. All right, the roller coaster. Left the gate. And we climbed up. before a large decline. So we've done this so far. Then it goes up a smaller hill and that's this part. Um, so then it goes up a smaller hill and declines again. And then for the short period of time, we're kind of on a flat track and then we're on a flat track. briefly before going back up one last hill before the end of the ride. So now let's practice drawing graphs given a scenario. So our first scenario here says in a single day, it snowed lightly during the morning, then heavily for the rest of the day. Graph time on the x-axis and total snowfall amount on the y-axis. So first let's label our graph. So it tells me to graph time on the x-axis. So you have to remember that the x-axis is the horizontal axis. It's the one that goes side to side. So I know I want this to be time and it tells me to put the total snowfall amount on the Y axis. So I'll call this snowfall. And you don't have to worry about putting numbers because we don't have any exact amounts here. Kind of like our example up here, they didn't have any real numbers. We're just sketching a graph to model the situation. So it says in a single day, it snowed lightly during the morning. So as time went on, it snowed, it just didn't snow at a quick rate. So it was very slow. So think of it as like a gradual incline. It snowed, so it was very slow, but of course, as the day went on, the total of snow kept accumulating. So that's why this line is gonna continue to go up. But then it says, then heavier or heavily for the rest of the day. So it started off real slow, and then it got heavier, so it's gonna go up quicker. So it's gonna become steep later in the day. So it was real slow at first, and then bam, lots of snowfall. So that's how we would graph that one. I'm gonna have you try number three on your own. Let me read it to you. It says, Mia bought a painting. The value of the painting dropped by 25% after one year. 
then increased in value over the next five years. Remember, those numbers do not necessarily mean anything like to you. You don't have to worry about what does 25% mean. All it's telling you is that it dropped by 25%. So you should think if it dropped, that means it, it went down. So remember that. So think that dropped. This is telling you your graph needs to be going down for a little bit. Um, but then it said it increased over the next five years, reaching a value that was twice what he had paid for it. Graph time on the x-axis and the value of the painting on the y. So that'll get you started. So go ahead and try number three on your own. For number four, it says a basketball was dropped out of a window on the second floor of a school onto the concrete below. Each time the ball hit the ground, it bounced and reached a height that was half of the previous bounce. It continued doing this until it settled on the ground. Graph, I'm going to go ahead and label, graph time on the x-axis and uh, distance from the ground on the y. So distance from ground. So imagine dropping a basketball, right? If you were standing on the second floor of a building and you dropped a ball, it would start very high up, right? It would start somewhere up high and it would fall straight down. So that's what it's going to do. So that's like the initial what happened to it. But it said it bounced. So it, and it bounced a height that was half of the previous bounce. So if it went like this, it went halfway back up. And then it dropped back down again. But then again, it bounced halfway of what it was before. And it continued this until eventually your ball just stops, right? So it looks something like that. So imagine a, bounce in a basketball, especially if you drop it from really high up, it would have multiple bounces. So it, you dropped it from really high up, it bounced down, it hit the concrete, came back up, and continued that pattern. So that would be the graph for number four. All right, at number five, it says Jace is speeding on a highway and gets stopped by a police officer. The officer gives him a ticket and he continues on the highway. Graph the time on the x-axis, so time's going here, and his speed on the y. So the easiest way to do these is to try to put yourself in the situation, like think about it in real life, what is happening. So we're thinking about time. So it says Jace is speeding on the highway. So its speed would be really high, right? If we're speeding, it's really high. So it's not down here at zero. I need to start up here. So he's speeding for a little bit and then it's like, bam, he was stopped by a police officer. So what happens when you get stopped by a police officer? Obviously you're gonna slow down until you stop. So he's going to gradually slow down until his speed is at zero because that means the police pulled him over. Well, there's time that's going to pass before he, you know, when he's getting his ticket before he starts driving again. So you need to account for that in your graph. So I'm going to draw a little line here. Like I'm not moving. My speed is zero, but time is still passing. Then it says... Um, the officer gives him a ticket, which is basically that straight line I just drew because we're not moving when the officer gives us a ticket and he continues on the highway after that. So he's going to have to gradually accelerate, right? So I need to slowly get my speed back up and it doesn't say he's speeding. So I wouldn't make this part as high, but he's going to get back up to maybe the actual speed limit and then continue on his way going that actual speed limit. So at this point, he was speeding. That's why it was so high. At this point, this is where he was pulled over getting his ticket. So he wasn't moving at all. And then here is where he's back on the highway. I'm going to abbreviate going the speed limit. So again, take your time and kind of think through it. And maybe even after you graph it, go back through it and think, does that make sense? All right, I am going to have you try number six on it, your own. So this one says, Carlos is a running back on his football team. 
He ran the same number of yards in each of the first six games of the season. After the sixth game, he did not play for the rest of the season due to an injury. Graph the games on the x-axis and the total yards for the season on the y-axis. So that's how your label should be. So think about what it's saying here. He ran the same number of yards in each of the first six games of the season. After the sixth game, he did not play. So what would happen to his yards? The other thing you have to think about is our y-axis is talking about the total yards for the entire season. So not just after one game. So think about what that would mean. Like say in game one, or it says he ran the same number of yards in each of the first six games. So say in game one, he ran for 10 yards. So that means in game two, he also ran for 10 yards. But at this point, we're now up to 20 total yards. In game three, he ran 10, four, he ran 10, five, he ran 10 yards, and six. And I'm just making up a scenario to help you think about this. So at the end of these games, though, again, our Y is representing the total yards. So I would do 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. So after six games, it's up to 60. So this thing is gradually increasing. I want you to think about that. Each game, he's adding 10 more yards onto his total. So think about it that way. Um, but then it says after that sixth game, he did not play for the rest of the games. So he would no longer be adding yards to his total. So what will that look like? Something to think about is will the yards go back down or will it remain the same? So think about that. All right, question seven says, Alice drives a school bus on her morning route. She stops at every block to let students on. Graph the time on the x-axis and the total distance the bus travels on the y. So this should continue to go up, right? As, as the bus driver drives, I'm at, she would be adding or he would be adding, or it's a girl, Alice, um, would be adding more miles onto her route every stop she had to make. So it would look something like this. I'm driving, I'm Alice the bus driver, and I'm driving, adding distance, miles to my car, and then I have to stop, right, to let somebody on. So I'm gonna stop for a minute or two to let them on. Then I continue driving. I stop again to pick somebody up. So time passes, but I'm not going anywhere. Then I pick up the next person. So I have to stop. We leave them and pick up the next person. So I stop. We leave them and so on. You can see the trend. So to kind of put this into perspective, these slanted lines are where she is driving, right? Each time. But these flat lines or where she has stopped to pick up the student. She's literally sitting there still, so she's not adding any miles onto the total distance traveled. So that would be the answer there. Question eight says, Ray started his workout by running on the treadmill. His heart rate rapidly increased and remained high during his run. After the treadmill, he lifted weights. His heart rate increased and decreased during this time. So I want you to label the x-axis as time and the y-axis as his heart rate and try to figure this one out on your own. I'm also going to have you do number nine on your own. So number nine says Carrie, Luke, and Mason receive the same allowance each month from their parents. Carrie spent a small amount of her money in the first half of the month, then spent the rest in the second half of the month. Luke steadily spent his money throughout the entire month. Mason rapidly spent all of his money in the first half of the month. Match each child's spending with the correct graph below. So I want you to tell me on graph one, I'm going to label them. On graph one, does this represent Carrie, Luke, or Mason? And then graph two, 
which one does that represent? Carrie, Luke, or Mason? And then on graph three, does that represent Carrie, Luke, or Mason? Okay, that concludes your video on distance um, graphs. They're graphs that are describing real world situations. If you have any questions, let us know.